Hello everybody, this is the second day on Shetland. It's a nice slightly foggy morning. We are going to the island of Musa today to see the Brock of Musa. And it is recommended that you do it quite early on on your trip to Shetland because the weather could always turn and the boat doesn't go when the sea gets rough. So that's the boat down there and they offer different types of trips. So we did the daytime sailing and it was £16 per adult. And then they also offer dusk sailings in the summer specifically to see storm petrels, which are birds that live and breed on the island of Musa. The brock itself is maintained by Historic Scotland. And then on the day we were there, there were people from the RSPB there as well, and they take care of the birds. So the wildlife on there is quite interesting. There's uh, different types of wild birds. There's seals as well. And in fact, there were also seals basking themselves along the shore near the boat. So there they are, and we really did see a lot more seals on Shetland than we did on Orkney. I think on Orkney we saw maybe one or two. So we're about to get on the boat. They kindly brought us a little closer to be able to see the seals. Here we are on the island of Musa. Now in Old Norse it means something like the mossy island. This island is uninhabited which probably has contributed in preserving the things on here quite well and as I said there are many birds that also breed in the summer. So mainly the birds we were able to see were shags which are a type of cormorant and they tend to sit on big rocks all along the coast. And we are on our way to the brock just now. There's two types of walks. There's one circular walk and a walk that goes straight to the brock, so you could just go to the brock and back to the boat. But of course we decided to do the circular walk. We just went to the brock first. So there they are, the chags sitting on the rocks. And there's so many ruins all over the place. So if you see it in the distance and you think, oh, is that maybe something old? But it's usually just an old farm or an old village that people used to live in and then it was abandoned. So you hear it is looming in the distance. Brock of Musa is the best preserved rock that you can still see that is nearly complete all the way to the top. And it is an Iron Age Brock. It was built roughly 100 BC. And it is even mentioned in some Norse sagas, such as Egil's saga and the Orkney saga. 
So obviously when the Norse came to Shetland, they also noticed this big building. It is quite big and imposing and it has a very interesting shape that's built from dry stone and there's no mortar. So it's really just stone stacked upon stone. We are about to go inside. And we had to keep the doors closed so that the birds wouldn't get in at that point. Apparently storm petrels are also nesting in there, or maybe they used to. There weren't any there at the time we came. And you can pick up a torch on the right hand corner to help you get up the stairs, because you can get all the way to the top. And this is the inside. This brothel was actually visited by quite a few people, including Sir Walter Scott. He called it the mightiest Pictish broch. So this is the top of the broch, and you get a really nice view. You can see there's a net as well all across the top and this is just so the birds can't get in at this point in time. And you get quite a decent view across the island. We are 13 meters up, that's roughly the height of the broch, which is about 44 feet. And that also makes it, I think, the tallest and even the narrowest, and also the broch with the thickest walls. And it was the end of the season. We were there in September, so it was nice and quiet. And that's a view from one of the top levels. Probably would have been some wooden structures inside the broth. And also it probably was occupied before that, so there might have been a wooden house before the broth was built. And there you can see the shag sitting on the box. So we are now going away from the broch on our circular walk. And there are some seals lying in these shallow pools and they tend to come here to raise their young. You know, so not recommended to go any closer to the seals than that, you can just about see them from the distance. It does help if you have binoculars. So I really liked the dew that was sitting in the spider web, so I decided to film it a little. Uh, 
and we are just sitting down by the wall and having a lunch and there they are, zoomed in. rocks and the coast are really quite interesting looking. They're not quite as colourful as the ones we've seen in Orkney, but they are overgrown with lichen and mosses. So it does make for a little more colour. The geology on Shetland is pretty much all over the place, so each separate part of it has its own geology. We did learn a bit more about that in the Shetland Museum, but that's for a later point. And now we are back on the boat. They are taking us around the island for a little bit longer, so we are driving past this big rock the birds on it so we can catch a better glimpse of them. And as you can see the island hasn't been always uninhabited so there's a few ruins here and there. quite rugged coast as well. The sailors have been told that some orcas have been seen so they also got it a bit closer to be able to see them and that's the orcas there in the distance and that was really a nice surprise for us. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.